Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Sunday to you all. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekends. Um, today was supposed to be a little bit of concert prep day uh, in preparation for Dream Concert 2024 that's happening uh, next weekend. Unfortunately, that concert show is now postponed, um, which left a Sunday open for me to get through a whole bunch of content that I missed while I was away on the research trip to China and the following um, kind of re recuperation period, so to speak, because um, boy was I exhausted after that trip. So, we have got kind of what is now becoming part three of the K-pop catch-up session from today. Um, this one for the soloists. Uh, weirdly, it's only female soloists um, on the list. I didn't mean for it to be like that. It just happened to be that way. But either way, I'm very excited because we have two debuts in our hands. And these are all members of groups that I hold very near and dear to my heart. As well as some come. Uh, we have a comeback as well, and a summer little remake project in here as well. I reckon this is going to be a great time. So we've got Miss Hyun, formerly of Cherry Bullet, rest in peace Cherry Bullet, I miss you dearly, um, making her solo debut, so congratulations Miss Hyun. We got a little bit of Miss Kwonumbi, my old soloist, my one pick from Eyes One Days in Produce 48, with a little bit of, I think it's a remake project of some sort, over on 1K. Miss Yuche, formerly known as Dajong, part of, well, when she was part of the Pixie lineup. Uh, we checked out her pre-debut before I left. She made her solo, official solo debut, I think, at the end of July, on the 31st. And then, well, Miss Somi had a comeback as well. So we've got four songs to check out, so let's get into them, shall we? Here we go! Start off with a little bit of Miss Heyoon one time. Gosh, I still cannot believe that Cherry Bullet are gone now. It's been like three months since Cherry Bullet's disbandment got announced, and I'm still not over it. Like, there have been some disbandments in the last couple years that have hit hard for me. Hot Issue, Cherry Bullet, Bandit. Um, who else is, I mean, the most recent, like, big name one that's really left a long impact for me is probably G-Friend. I'm still not over the G-Friend disbandment, <laughs> um, considering they were, like, the group that got me into K-pop way back in the day, but I still cannot believe Cherry Bullet's gone, man. Like, they were so fun. I got, I, I'm so lucky to have gotten the opportunity to hear them live at, uh, MIK in London in 2022 but they were so fun i enjoyed their music so much and i they were so underappreciated but i'm glad that members are getting their individual chances to you know kind of revive their career on their own terms so to speak so miss hayen let's see what you got for us If you know, you know, I'm a sucker for a good ballad. Let's bump up the volume a little bit. There it 
Chris. It's amazing how much of like a contrast vocally cherry bullet had, isn't it? Because for me, Heyoon and Bora had always been like, like the counter to each other. Like even here, Heyoon's putting more oomph into her voice now, but it's just so mellow and soft and almost like a creamy vocal texture that's so nice to listen to. But I like that her voice is developing as we develop throughout the song. That was a tasty little bit of vibrato in there. Hey, you and hold on. Key change? Ballad, gorgeous vocals, a key change during a hole. There it is. And the super soft finish. There it is. <sighs> Look, I can already tell this isn't going to be for everyone just because it's a ballad. For me, this is very nice indeed. I am a sucker for a good ballad. It's why I love OSC Saturdays so much. This is a terrific ballad. It's got, like, you can feel the heartfeltness behind it. The English title. It's called I Miss You Now, and you can almost, you feel the emotional kind of longingness behind it. The vocals! I mentioned how Heyoon and Bora and Cherry Bullet for me had always been like the counter to each other. For me, like, Bora has, had always had that almost musical theater type voice, right? And Heyoon for me has always had that really very pretty, soft, but firm voice that just had a really nice texture to it. In the lovely setup for me, it's like um, if Heyoon is Yane, Bora is K. I don't know how many of you will get that cut, get that um, not analogy, that, that comparison, but for me and Cherry Bull, you needed both Bora and Heyoon's vocals to really just like put the song together vocally and Ames always had a voice that I loved listening to, because her voice was like the Swiss Army knife of voices. You can have the really soft, gentle whisperiness. You can also have the pretty firm, but clean tone as well, and you got the full range of that through this. Which, you know, for a solo debut is kind of what you want, especially if you're a debut, like a solo debuting artist formerly part of a group. You want to show off... You want to show off the skills, you want to show off the talents, and you want to show off the charms on the first go. And while this is a ballad, and a ballad does not play to everyone's taste, for me, it's the perfect Heyoon song for me. Because you get every single flavor of Heyoon vocal on display, you get the emotionalness of a song that, you know, this is... As, let, me, let me try to think of the right way to phrase this. I don't know what, you know, Heyoon is thinking about when she goes into this release. But if I were in her shoes, this would be a very emotionally confusing time for me. I, I will feel very almost liberated and free that I get to do things on my own terms. 
but I'm going to be missing the fact that, you know, things aren't going to be the same anymore. Not, you're going to be entirely on your own. You're not going to have a group of your members there to support you in person, like on stage, whether it's musically. I'm, I'm sure they're still in contact with each other and stuff, but this is like an emotionally very difficult time, I think. And... Even though it may be an emotionally difficult time, you still feel like the true emotion of what the artist is feeling throughout the song as you're listening to it. And I think you really get that best if it's in ballad form. I've always believed that a ballad is the best way musically to push an emotion. I, I genuinely believe that, and I think this is also a great example of that. Hell yeah. That got long-winded at the end, I apologize. But we move on. Miss Umbi. I love what Umbi does musically. I thought Sabotage was a brilliant title track. Although, having said that, The Flash is still my favorite Umbi project that she's done, all encompassing, including B sides and stuff like that. But we have a remake? Question mark? Um, song title, please, Summer! Exclamation point. Very important. Um,. I don't know what the original song is, I don't know if this is like a project single and whatnot, but what cutesy kind of bright umbi music also hits. So let's see what this one is all about. Here we go. Or is this a song she did for the sprites? The sprites see ya. Loud. Holy moly, we are off to an impactful start. Um, the vibes are great already. It feels like almost like a continuation of the song that she did with Paul Blanco last year. It's just brighter, summerier, but it's got the grooviness of Like Heaven, I think was the song. It's definitely high though, like this song is up there, up there. Yeah, it's got this really easy going brightness to it. into what the context of this is, or like at least what the original of this song is, because this is this is really nice, but it also feels a lot older than you know the beast discography in general. Like you can tell that this is not something that was written for her specifically. during her eyes one day either. Some songs we did. Not all the time though. And this is very nice. Nice. 
Let's reset. I feel like this is one of those songs where it's it's definitely summery, but it's not like bright summer beach party summery. It's more relaxed, but it still has that warm, bright vibe that you want from a summer song. Very nicely done. It's a very well-suited song for her. That's still very much you know it's performed by umbi very clearly but it's got the umbi flair it's definitely not an original umbi song and i like that i like that you can tell this is like her personal spin well her personal spin on song because i think in terms of how it's been written is a song that for me showcases a side of umbi's vocals that you really don't get a whole lot in her studio discography like if we're looking at just title tracks door into glitch into underwater into the flash into sabotage these are all pretty high intensity songs all things considered and even her I'm trying to think of like um little special singles she's done like esper was a pretty hard hitting song but She's also done some more laid-back stuff, like um, the Studio Bamilie single, uh, what was that called? Um, there was an MV for it with Heiwon, it was adorable. Oh gosh, it was, I think, a Mirror, I think it was called Mirror. Um, digital single she did with the Paul Blanco feature, like Heaven. And Please Summer, these are all songs that showcase her soft vocals, a more kind of chill, laid-back umbi. And I think it kind of gets slept on a little bit, because... Right now, when people think of umbi and her music, it's that dance, hard-hitting, edm banger type song. Which, I think, you know, good with good reason, because she's really found her strength, and she's really found a foothold in that corner of the music world like sabotage the flash glitch and underwater these are all very edm heavy dance songs that she does so well but i think this side of umbi's music is so underappreciated and it's a slept on side of umbi's music that i unironically love listening to and i hope we get more of this because don't get me wrong had this been the EDM banger of her title tracks mixed with the summer vibes of the current music season, I would not have been mad at it one bit. I love the summer release season. Like, I'm thinking songs like, you know, April's Now or Never, like, Brave Girls' is Chima Param. I'm talking that level of, like, summer dance party banger. I would not have been mad at one bit. Because I reckon Umbi could probably do something like that. But this laid back Umbi is so nice. And I love it. I'm so glad that we got this. Mm. Moving on, the next in line in terms of soloist the debuts to check out Miss Yuche, um, formerly known as Dajong of Pixie. I have no idea what's happening with Pixie at the moment. Like, uh, what is it? Dajong left. Well, I mean, Pixie has always been kind of undergoing member cha member lineup changes here and there. And, I mean, there's two members on vacation right now, like Sua and... Oh, gosh, who who's on vacation with Sua at the moment? There's, like, two members on vacation together. Yuche went solo. She's also on the tour with... um. Craxy and like trends and stuff right now. Hopefully she's having fun with that. But she went solo. Congratulations. We have another former member going solo. Um the pre-release was really cute. Like it, it's very heartfelt, very personal to her. We had the Pixie albums off to the side, and that got me all up in my feelies. But this is like the real deal now. 
and I do see that it's quite a short song, which is slightly unfortunate, but I'm excited to hear what she's brought to the table. So let's see what Miss UJ has brought on her solo debut. Here we go. More high energy than I thought it was gonna be. Every night, flash light, or was stuck in a show. Four stars. Oh, wow, stars, hold on. It meant nothing without you. But I found that what I wanted, baby, when you come my eye. Because now I know every moment that I glow. Oh, uh, uh, you look at this is like not what I thought she would go for. I'm not mad at it though. Win. So we're really leaning into this EDM dance tune, aren't we? A wee bit loud. Wow. I'm genuinely surprised at one, the direction she's gone, but two, how well she pulls this off? Hello, EDM Riser. Gosh, that, that fade away completely picked me out. I thought the song was over. That's where the song finishes. Okay. It is short. I think it's, what, two? Not even two verses. It's like a verse, and then you get the extended chorus, bridge, and outro, in a way. Um, but EDM Uche is not what I expected. Have I said that enough? That's wow. I kind of like it though. Like, why? Why does that really suit her? I think her the production side of things really works for this as well. You know what? I'm gonna take a second to pull up the producers for this song because I want to know who's I want to know who who's behind this. Okay, so that's really interesting. I have Genius pulled up on the second screen over here. Um. So I see the writers list on here. A lot of the writers are new, or at least their genius pages are pretty new. There's a couple like Kim Chunga and um, Kid Pool have worked on City, like Dalshabet City solo stuff. Uh, Toothless and Light Fury are both entirely new, but Joy On Bay is the one that definitely surprised me because. Essentially, their entire credits list is laced with Pixie songs. And that's really cool, the fact that, you know, one of the uh, producers in charge of, essentially, Pixie's discography continued on with Yuche's solo stuff. I think that's really neat. And I see that they've done uh, stuff for Lola as well. See some Craxy stuff in here. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that. I've also just noticed that this drop with a mini album, um, and a five track mini album as well, I may have to go and listen to that at some point, if not on camera in my free time, because this is kind of a big deal, you know what I mean? Um, but the song itself, listen, I'm in my EDM for like, I had an EDM phase in high school, and this very much plays into that. 
I feel like, um, you know, when she was still Dajong in Pixie, I, I didn't know Pixie well enough to, I think, truly appreciate the vocal skill set that she brought to a Pixie song. But her voice, mixed in an EDM-oriented track, is really cool. Like, there's a certain charm about her voice that I don't think I noticed on Pixie tracks that I notice now that it's on, like, this EDM-based song. That's really neat to me. I wonder if she's gonna go EDM. Cool. Oh, wait, I really like that. That might be... I reckon this is gonna be one of those releases that goes completely under the radar for a lot of people, because I think Pixie already went under a lot of people's radars, but to get one member out of that group that makes, makes a solo debut, like... Only hardcore Winxies are, or not even hardcore Winxies, but like Winxies are probably going to be the only people that know of Yuche as an artist. I hope more people pick this up, and I hope we get more music like this on the album. I think this works for her. I like that. Also, following up Umbi with an EDM bass track. I didn't plan for that to happen, but I like that. More EDM, man. I think EDM is a cool genre. But. We have one a final song. This is John Somi making a comeback with the song titled Ice Cream. Um, I don't know what the context behind this release is. I think it's interesting that, you know, an artist from the Black Label and a YG group have released a similar, like the same titled song on similar points in the year. I don't know if we have a Western artist feature on this or not, like we did with Blackpink and Selena Gomez, but I thought that's an interesting quinky dink. Um, last time around was Fast Forward, and that EP was a pretty good time. I don't know what this is going to be like. Somi's music isn't... It's pretty hit or miss for me. That opinion usually changes after first listening and stuff too, but let's see what this is all about. Loud. Why do I feel like these songs are getting louder and louder as we go? Is it fully English? Interesting instrumental progression here. Huh. It's not the punchy release I was expecting to happen. Cool descending scale there. I'll give this song this. The instrumental choices and the instrumental melodies and stuff with the Somi top line makes a lot of sense. Like, nothing feels really out of place. There's definitely a thing where every section of the song is treated a little bit differently, and the instrumentation shows that. And I think it's most evident here. In this pre chorus. But it definitely has the quirkiness that I feel like Somi can bring with her music sometimes. The runs of this song, though, are really fun to listen to. Like, da -da 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 -da. That part, I think that's so fun to listen to. I love a shrill brass section like this too. If it gets any I'll be melting the butter. If it gets any If it gets any I'll be melting the butter. Come and get any wonder. Yeah, I'm like ice cream. Oh yeah. Got you wish you It's just a casual bop. And Sometimes, you know, you, you want a song that's straightforward and you just, you want a vibe. 
mute it for the entry. Love the rumble of that brass section on the descent. Nice! You know what? I'm not mad at it. Oh, hello, outro. Yeah, I'm not mad at that song, you know? Like, when I was listening to it through the first verse, I wasn't sure what to expect. It took a little while for me to warm up to it, but by the time we finished the song, I'm not mad at it. Is it my favorite Somi song in the world? Not quite. But did it need to be? It's just a fun song for the summer, and... Hey, you know what? Say, like... You're, enti you're entirely free to your own opinions, but for me, as just like a kind of quirky, fun summary song, ah, I'd say this is mission accomplished. It's, I mean, look, if we're talking about my musical taste, the moment we got that brassy section in the chorus, it was over for me. I love a well-written brass section. And to get a brass section that not just like, you know, has like a big prominence in the song, but has a big prominence because of the rumble, of, like the like the trill effect that goes on the trill that you get oh it's tasty like go back to that first course if i can find it Ice cream, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, like this is oh i love the character that a brass section brings to the table in pop music and for me this has the liveliness, this has the character, this has, like, this is the brass instrument equivalent of bringing all the sass. And I, I love stuff like this, you know? It's, it's, it's little tiny details like this that very much work for me. And especially paired with the pre-course beforehand where it goes, it goes almost synth poppy in a way. <laughs> And then it's kind of anti-droppy in a way where when you have the chorus with Somi on the top line, it's a pretty minimal chorus. Which for me, like, would I have preferred if we got a big kind of brash loud party vibe immediate release on the chorus? Yes. I think that would have given it that big part summer party vibe off rip. But the fact that we get that brassy kind of extended course of the post course afterwards kind of quells that a little bit. But the song does work in increments, kind of like with what was the song that we did earlier today in one of the other catch ups? I forgot which one it was, but the way this song works in individual blocks, where you know you have your verse, which is treated one way, you have your pre course, which is treated a different way or arranged a different way, course one which is arranged a little bit differently. Post-chorus one, which is arranged a little bit differently. Every single section feels like a different phrase. They're not purposely trying to, you know, blend the lines or blur the lines between, between segments and stuff. And that clarity works in the song's favor, I think, because you know exactly how to approach each section based off of where you are in the song. And I think it's the simplicity of following along with it that works for me on this. Nice. I don't know how much of the waffling that ended up happening at the end there, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it one bit. You know, we got some new face or new but familiar faces to the scene. We got some. We got a little bit of a you know blast from the past done modern style. We got a comeback that's brought the party to the table, and it's. I'd say that was a pretty good time. I'm not gonna lie. And hopefully, all everyone that we cover on these catch-ups, we get to check out in the not-so-distant future, because, hey, I, I, I love music, man, and if, if we get new music, I'm a happy guy, so. 
very very good stuff indeed but i am gonna leave it here because i still have three more blocks of music to get to and it is almost dinner time so thank you all for watching along with me hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did one last request from me today, let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be checking with your friends or family, holding the door open for somebody, or picking a piece of trash off the street. Just with one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be. Even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time. Know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.